Award-winning author, podcast host, and writer of the popular Substack newsletter, Letters from an American, Boston College history professor Heather Cox Richardson has captivated millions with her analysis of America's political evolution and the forces shaping its future. And in her latest book, Democracy Awakening, Notes on the State of America, she takes us on a historical journey, examining the current crossroads facing America with a narrative that is both a wake-up call and a beacon of hope for the future. Heather Cox Richardson joins us now. Thank you so much for coming on the show. The book argues for a reinterpretation of U.S. history with a focus on democracy. Why do you believe this perspective is so crucial for understanding America today? Because that perspective, I think, marries both the honor that we give to our founding documents, particularly the Declaration of Independence, with its declaration that we have a right to be treated equally before the law and to have a say in our government, and the recognition that our society has never perfectly treated minorities. That the reason that the United States has managed both to address the inequalities in its founding, but also consistently to expand its understanding of liberal democracy is because marginalized populations populations have always held up the principles that were articulated in the Declaration of Independence. They have always said, hey, listen, that idea of equality and having a say in your government is a great idea. Why doesn't it apply to me? And that marriage of those two different strands that we're experiencing right now, I think, tells us a lot about how we empower ourselves to rebuild democracy in the present and for the future. You write, democracies die more often through the ballot box than at gunpoint. I explain how that's played out in other countries and, and what it could mean for this country. Well, crucially, many people think that you lose a democracy when tanks start running down the street or people start goose-stepping down Main Street, right? But the reality is that people lose their democracies when they come to believe something that isn't true, when strong men convince them to vote against their own interests and to give up their own power because they believe in something that isn't real. And crucially, relying on a reality-based media, relying on reality, making sure you understand what is really happening rather than what is being fed to you is really important because what you see in countries like Hungary, where Viktor Orban has managed to gut a democracy and put himself in power, you see people voting for a strong man who gradually takes away all of their power. We are close to having a certain group of people doing the same thing to us in the United States of America today. We've seen reports on how former President Trump would use a potential return to the White House to seek revenge against perceived enemies. How much is the concern for where America is potentially going connected to former President Trump and his efforts to return to power? Well, I'm very concerned about it. I think you must take those kinds of things seriously, especially since he certainly laid the groundwork for things like gutting our civil service and for things like taking revenge on his enemies and for things like weaponizing the Department of Justice and for things like taking over con uh, control of the military in his first term. The fact that we are not paying attention to the things that he is saying, we are not adequately recognizing that he is laying out a strong man uh, military dictatorship right Right now strikes me as deeply problematic. That's not to say that people shouldn't disagree about our democracy. We shouldn't disagree about things like immigration and financial policy and infrastructure. But we can do that within the framework that accepts the idea that a majority should rule and we should have everybody participating in our democracy. What actions do you believe that Americans can take in order to try to continue to support a healthy democracy? The Everybody should get involved, first of all, and they should take up oxygen, getting involved at the local level, showing up to school board meetings, showing up to town council meetings, showing up for any time in which your voice will have a direction, will, will impact the direction of your town, your state, and your federal government. Often I think people just sort of assume that if they put the right president in place, the rest will come. And the reality is actually uh, the opposite, that you need to put your effort in at all levels of government. Heather, we thank you so much for joining us. Democracy Awakening Notes on the State of America is now available to purchase wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.